Welcome to another draw distance game in the setting of World of Darkness called Vampire Masquerade Shadows of New York. And we're playing one character uh, comparable to the Cotters of New York when you had three different ones to play. And the game was released the 10th of September and uh, we're gonna play it now. Let's head into it and see what we can do. Welcome to my castle. Don't expect everyday logic to work here. It went out of the window sometimes after midnight, maybe earlier. My kingdom is not of this world you see. It lies far outside of the concrete, tangible reality. I've tried to identify the way people reach it, and I'm convinced it has something to do with the moon. Some say the moon's aura can turn them insane. You heard the phrases moonstruck and lunatic. The way I see it, moonlight gives them some subliminal permission to reveal their true selves. And so, whenever they let the silver radiance guide them to the gates of this place, they feel different. Once they pass the doorstep, they ready to act out. A dance of horror where Marvel begins. It's 3.31 a.m. Welcome to Big Beat Burger. If you're here at this hour, you're not exactly readying up to be a productive member of society come tomorrow morning. More likely, you praying that the sunrise never comes. Insatiable children of the night gather round, hoping to bask in the afterglow of tonight's victories on wind after a frustrating series of failures, or simply fight to keep themselves together. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here, greedily reveling in every interaction they have. They have no idea that they're only here for my amusement. To them, I'm just a random girl sitting in the corner. But this is my domain. I've been coming here almost every night for years. I know where to sit, where to look, and where to eavesdrop from maximum amusement. I'm basically, basically a voyeur, and I'm ashamed to admit it. It gave, it gave me insight about the human condition I never otherwise have gathered, and more importantly, a necessary skill, to set, a skill set to make ends meet as a journalist. As I write on my crappy old laptop, patiently waiting for the legion of negative voices in my head to get too tired to off offer useless feedback, I keep my senses peeled to pick up stories around me. Of course, a lot of regular events, such as food fights, are nothing to write home about, aside from my unfortunate tendency to become collateral damage in someone else's battles. Up to this day, I had to wash my clothes because of coke, diet coke, hot coffee, apple pie and some sort of mm, Im improvised honey mustard bomb. Every stain tells a different story. Sometimes this hobby is exhausting, sometimes it's disturbing and sometimes it's dangerous, although not as risky as back when I was, uh, wasn't carrying pepper spray. Still, the sights I've taken in over the years here have made it absolutely worth it. I got so many stories, I don't know where to begin. Theatrical breakups, impromptu morning parties, unexpected friendships forged in the fire of senseless battle. battle. A lady in a gorgeous Givenchus dress ordering a box of takeout chicken nuggets, paying in cash with her hands completely covered in blood. She was asked if she wanted a napkin. She said no. Two thir uh, thirsty matcha dude shamelessly going for it in the corner. Hushed moaning filled in the lobby while everyone around valiantly fights to act as usual maintaining an illusion of normal normalcy. A straight up kung fu fight between a diminutive cashier and some drug uh, bodybuilder going through a psychotic episode, trying to break all the windows. 
the big guy left the joint fully convinced he KO'd himself while the server uh, service uh, worker were just standing next to him. Seem proud of his victory too. A middle-aged hag getting a heart attack after screaming her lungs out not to let Muslims near her food just because she saw a little white girl wearing a hairnet behind the counter. A mass couple robbing a restaurant of 30 hamburgers, forcing the employees to cook at gunpoint. Police uh, later said those were art students reenacting some hipster book they read. This is life. This is humanity at its worst and best. This is the noise that serves as the foundation for my creativity. This is the soma that keeps me going. This is... Sai. As pathetic as it may sound, these days this is the only place where I feel alive. Sometimes I think of myself as a leech feeding on these people's stories, emotions, personalities, just because I'm not satisfied with mine. At times I think of my psyche as some kind of shitty postmodern construct that is fundamentally incapable of honesty, but, I only, uh, but only yearns for something felt and truthful. Does this even make any sense? I look at the screen of my laptop. 3.47 a.m. At this point, I'm almost som somnambulic, but nothing interesting has happened yet. Feels like all the customers are watching each other tonight, hoping for the others to provide a fun diversion. This is my turf, my you parasitic douchebags. Next time, go find your own. Think it's time to call it a, a, a night. The coffee I always order so that they don't kick me out is undrinkable. Ugh. I reread the rough draft I've been working on for the last six hours. God damn, this is pure trash. I hold the backspace button until the Google document page is nothing but a calm white slate uh, lets out a sound of deep relief. There is no pleasure more intoxicating for a frustrated writer than raging on someone even worse than them. And what target is easier than the dumb bitch you used to be 10 minutes ago? I check the time again. I need to go. I have an important meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. and I have a hunch it's not going to end well. And it's not because I'm an irresponsible dumbass who's going to need a few cups of coffee to simply function as a on a basic level despite, like, four hours of sleep. It's because I always have a hunch of things are not going the way they're supposed to. Click, clack, click, click, clack. Computer punching. Well, guys, it's a good opening, actually. Uh, the character, we get a feel of her, and let's see where uh, this will uh, keep going, heading. The loud clatter of keyboards assault me from all sides, making this splitting headache unbearable. Used to be, I dreamed of nothing else but being a part of New York Lodestar editorial team. It was the first magazine I started reading regularly. The first magazine I even bought for myself. Now simply hearing the word Lodestar is not enough uh, to ruin my mood. Never mind seeing all this old farce phoning in more reac um, reactionary opinion columns and Wikipedia level analysis of current events. Click clack, click click clack. They used to destroy and rebuild my entire worldview every month. They shaped my thinking about politics, art, journalism. They even pointed me toward my favorite cigarette brand, for God's sake. Then some talented people started leaving for green new pastures. Some got too wrapped up in, in their own neurosis. Some became complicant. All of them committed the sin of allowing themselves to grow older. Fresh blood was deemed unnecessary even uh, though young freelancers kept uh, being bled dry. These days, uh, whenever someone from outside Lodestar 
talks about Lowstar. It's because of a few idealistic contributors willing to accept meager pay while putting in serious work. Dumbasses. Other than that, the magazine's speciality is publishing pale echoes of provocative ideas I heard somewhere else a few years prior, wrapped in an aesthetic that hasn't been cutting edge for a decade. No wonder the readership is in a free fall. But even though the ship is sinking, the old guard won't let it go down without the fight. As in, if anyone from the outside attempts to board the vessel in hopes of fixing its courses or its holes, they will be swiftly taken care of. I should know. Been there, done that. As it stands, the only full-time staff member who doesn't make me regularly attempt to cringe my face off with his writing. Is Lode Star Editor in Chief Brian NG, the man sitting in front of me right now? Of course. He only has uh, time for editorials these days. A drop in the sea of needs. Manager uh, managerial duties hit him hard. It's the second time he lets out a theatrical cough like this. He said his piece, now it's up for me to react, and I'm coming up blank. But what do you want me to say, Brian? I'm pissed off. I can't tell you all. Uh, you already made your, uh, uh, your made up your mind, but you still want to go through the motions just to make me feel listened to. Whatever. Let's do this. So we're at our first uh, choice. One of the editorial guys on Lodestar. So let's see where. This going to head. Uh, actually, quite interested to see how the story goes. I actually think uh, you're protecting a complete purse here. The man is actually a harasser. Brian the Gold was major fraud. I think I will go with the major fraud thing. It sounds. Uh, the most interesting, actually. Brian, my article is even, uh, isn't even some, something like lashing out at the rich and hope it don't hit back. I think double spirals investor would be appreciate being told they're being scammed. That's if, and that's a big if, they're not a conscious part of the scam. Oh, come on. And even if they weren't, I doubt they'd be generous enough to protect us from the fallout. You're avoiding the core of the issues. No, I believe I pinpointed it in a precise way. If if it were up to me, I'd green light the article here and now and we wouldn't be having this conversation. But you're killing the article just because some rich shit had told you he doesn't like it. Get real, this is not about a millionaire jerk calling me to make me an offer that I can't refuse. What What is it about then? Because it looks awfully like it's about my boss telling me this outlet can't afford the legal action we haven't already been threatened with. So millionaires interference. Oh, for crying out loud, Julia, don't make me treat you like a child. You know this how this works. I, uh, I publish your story. It's Thiel versus Gawker all over again. I'll also tear, I'll also tear until we bleed dry. I have a mor uh, mortgage. Uh, I have three mouths to f f uh, waiting to be fed at home. I have an amazing team that doesn't deserve to be torn apart over some. Don't you think it's uh, it's telling you uh, telling you mention your mortgage first? Silence. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stumbling on the word a bit. Uh, I'm going probably. Um, be more of that because I'm playing one hour instead of my uh, 25 minutes episodes. Um, so let's continue. Silence. Just asking questions. I know better than to get into these empty semantics arguments with you, Miss Sovinsky. You're good at them. Problem is, you're still not good enough. Ah, the problem is, you're still not good enough. Meaning, you're too in love with wearing a good star and establishing a seductive narrative to let facts get in the way. You've got uh, enough boring uh, pseudos with no principles on board these days. They always give you facts because that's all they can do. 
I'm using facts as a way to approach some kind of truth. Except facts can, be blindside, uh, can blindside you, and Double Spiral has enough facts to water down your story to the point where it makes no sense to publish it. The HR and PR are working over time to deliver a convincing counter-narrative. They're doing a great job. Won't mit mitigate the damage completely, but will put every little thing in question. Jesse Montgomery is a racist, a fraud, a sexual predator, and a downright, uh, uh, downright satanic fuckhead. Julia. Let me say it again. Jesse Montgomery is a racist, a fraud, a sexual predator, and a downright satanic fuckhead. Do you personally believe it or not? This is not. You listen to the tapes. You read the transcripts. You've seen the documents. You got the files. I, I'm asking your personal opinion. Do you believe it or not? Click, clack, click, click, clack. Of course I do. But that's besides the point. It's not. Look, how about I just say it out loud and save us both some time? We're not having this conversation because there's an actual conversation to be had. You set up this meeting knowing we're very damn well there's only one way it's going to end. You got a mortgage and three mouths to feed. You prioritize the well-being of your direct surroundings over the nebulous concepts of greater good. I get it. I really do. Yet for some reason, it seems like you're only prolonging this conversation and rationalizing your decisions. So that I forgive you? Officially exonerate you? I'm not the bad guy here, Julia. Oh yes, yes you are. I think I will go with that one. It's a, it's an interesting discussion uh, discussion they're having. I uh, would we'll say you uh, are. So what are you? This one is quite in interesting also because he's defending himself, but uh, I feel in the mood. I, f I feel the mood is uh, uh, quite offensive. So let's do this one and see what happens. I think you are Brian. Julia. But I know you're generally a decent guy, so you must have a prepared something you can say to turn this ship around. I'm still waiting for you to say it. You made your deal with the devil, but you're not in the ti uh, not the type to sell your soul. So just tell me, how can you make this up to rest, uh, reset your karma? What have you got? He mutters something under his breath, ending with a self-pitying chuckle. Bad guy, decent guy, a victim circumstance. I don't know if you really care about the distinction. But to be honest, as Lone Star's editor in chief, all I've got for you is something that will make you think I'm the biggest scumbag in the universe. Oh, come on, don't turn this into, put, into a pity party. No, I'm absolutely a scumbag. And why is that? Because I'm firing you. Shit. My thoughts are scrambled. For a brief moment, the state of my bank account displays before my eyes with startling clarity. A howling void opens in, in my chest and starts traver, traveling towards my stomach. No, don't panic yet, you idiot. Get more information. Now there must be a catch. And what about my work? Hmm, this is interesting. Uh, you're joking. Uh, yeah, I think all of these works. But what suits our character the most? Is this final? I think I will go with this one because um, it's a uh, straightforward uh, question about the work and everything. Uh, she loved being at Low Star, so let's see what he says about this. Let, uh, let me get this straight. Ever since we met, I've been working on stories, pieces no one else in your office would touch for a 10-foot pole. Constantly interviewing total nobodies, always busy tra uh, traveling to the middle of nowhere or regretting my last trip. Repeatedly ordered to clean up someone else's mess. Julia, all your long-winded spiels about the disposable work is the most important work. And suddenly you only remember the disposable part. My feelings about the quality of your work remains the same as ever. It was vital. It kept the magazine going. I will always appreciate it. Then why would you threaten to fire me? 
I would never threaten you. It's a done deal. They made their decision perfectly clear. They? What they? Who is they? He glances left and right and then points upward for a short moment. When he speaks up again, it's a, in a hushed uh, voice. You know, it's big kahunas. I can't really question them. They want your head on a silver plate. He's not looking me in the eye. You're not joking. I would never joke about stuff like this. It's real. Fucking hell, it's real. Damn, 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 damn it to hell. All these years, all this grind, all my... Uh, all this grind, all my plans, and for what? Fucking assholes, you know I deserve better and I always deserve, deserve better. And it always ends with me going down the dra uh, drain back to the sewers. Fuck! No! Take a few deep breaths. Don't lose the plot now. Keep yourself together, your idiot. The moment you show weakness, they go for your th throat. Get back in control. You can't do this. I wish I didn't have to, but it's a lost cause. No, I mean, it's impossible. Julia? You can't fire someone who's never been hired in the first place. It takes him a few seconds to put on his oh I get it face, let out a troubled gasp and start massaging his temples. Lodestar has been my biggest source of income for the past few years, that much is true. But technically nobody has ever hired me here, it was all freelance jobs. A full time position only served as a kind of dangling carrot. A promise of a decent pay grade career perspectives and maybe even some kind of insurance to save my failing health and the recognition I would get for being part of the Lone Star team, a posi position that everyone around me seems to respect, aside from me. <laughs> then why did I want it so much? There will be time to mourn what could have been. For now, I should act like I don't care. You know what I mean, if I let you work even under a fake name it would be a guillotine for me. This is ridiculous, you know I'm going to start shopping this store around the second I leave this room, don't you? Of course I, you know, I told them. Any response? Let us worry about that. Well that doesn't sound ominous at all. Click. Clack, click, clack, click. I do wonder if I could get accustomed to one of these loud mechanical keyboards some people here love to use. Whenever I did my work in here, I was still expected to bring my own crappy laptop and sit closer to the lobby. Always on the outside, no matter how hard I try to break in. A vibration in my back pocket feels like a bad omen. I decide to ignore it for now. I've been working on this fucking story for, I don't know, 16 months on and off. I know. You kept cheering me on. I know. We would, uh, we have even agreed on the pay I'd receive. I know. I'm two months behind my rent, uh, on my rent. No wait, two and a half. I catch him off guard and he's momentarily taken aback and then gives me a pathetic stare. Don't you look at me this way, you don't have the right. I didn't know. Well, now you do. Look, if there's anything I can do to help. If you can't tell your big kahunas to fuck off, I, I think there's a, uh, there isn't a single thing. Julia. I pull out the smoke and light it up. Got to get it back in control. Please don't do that. There's a smoke detector here. No worries. Nick turned it off a few weeks ago. Probably the most creative things he's done in the past five years. Good old Nick. The perfect first, uh, 21st century cinema reviewer. 
never has an original thought of his own, just relies on his purely algorithmic taste to stay likable. And the best thing is, it works. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a cough. <laughs> it's a lot of reading, so... <clears throat> Funny, I used to dream about this job. It was Brian who uh, killed his dream, making me realize Nick won't be unseated anytime soon and offered to teach me the ways of investigative, investigative journalist instead. Wasn't a career I ever uh, wanted to, uh, to pursue, but to my dismay, I turned out to be surprisingly good at it until this Montgomery thing happened. Serves me right, lesson learned. I should have pursued my dreams instead. Stop it. Nicholas is a good friend, a respected critic, a member of my team. And put out that smoke. People tell me I, uh, I let you step all over me. Why do I even let you act this way? Because you once told me honesty is most important in a mentor student relationship. And, that's, uh, and that it works both ways. And because I thought we were friends. He bites his lip and stares sideways to avoid my eyes. At the end of the day, bosses aren't friends. Must have been a German mentor if I didn't even teach you that. That sounds like a bad mentor. Could have been better, still responsible for me. Uh, guilt trip. <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah, keep. She wants to stay in control, so yeah, yeah. Could have been better. This one, she's just quiet, so I should think. To voice her thought, uh, train of thoughts, it's uh, to keep the control. This is the the best option. We are still respon You are still responsible for me. Oh no, you're not getting off this hook that easily. You're still my mentor. I would make sure you t uh, you take responsibility. You're getting rid of me. At least point me in the right direction. I need to get my shit together fast, and I can't do it on my own. Fair. I might have failed as a guide, but I will do what I can to uh, not to, to leave you stranded, okay? There are options. None of them are a remedy for all your troubles. But... Uh, wait a second. Another verbation in my pocket. Another foreboding feeling. This time, I reluctantly take the smartphone out of my pocket. If it has to rain, why not let it pour? <laughs> a new email. It's a lengthy, a lengthy one. And the center, speak of the devil. No, 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 this can't be Christ. I just got an email from Mila Lopez. She claims she just been laid off from Double Spiral, same as uh, Mike Antonoff and Jared Rivera. What? It's what happened? I spare you all her insults, okay? The thing is, it seems the AR uh, knows all the confidential information about my journalistic investigation and used it to shut everyone's mouth. Hell, apparently Montgomery walked up to Lopez as she was uh, emptying her desk and told her to thank me for being a, quote, dumb, careless cunt. Brian goes pale. I think he has a very good reason too. You fucking scumbag, you outed my sources? What? What? Of course not. What are you even saying? Oh, don't you dare play in coy. It must have been either you or me, no one else, and you know the way I work. My investigation basic but untraceable, both on and offline. Car carefully pick the meeting spots, encryption upon encryption, every direct um, qu uh, quote rewritten five times just in case. All sort of red herring sh scatter around. I know my shit, you know I do. And this timing? Did you just pass a flash drive to your beloved big kahunas during a meeting as a sign of goodwill? Look, I get, uh, get you upset, but why don't, you, why don't we just talk this through calmly? No. <laughs> That's my uh, first uh, thing. I will say you're right. We should now fuck off. Okay, let's take it step by step. <laughs> All right, sorry for no fuck you. Uh, uh, 
Actually, this one is actually the sweetest one. Okay, let's take it step by. Fuck you. Fuhrer takes the wheel. I'm just here along for the ride. I can't do anything about it. In a deranged way, realizing just a passenger in your own body feel, uh, feels li liberating. Let's just see it all unfold. Calmly. Fuck you, Brian. Julia! I've been paranoid for months and months, acting like everyone uh, I didn't know was an assassin or corporate spy. I know I haven't messed up. Not in a way that would impl implicate all of them. You know. No, you, you, you goddamn. You thought you could get away with this? I haven't done anything improper. Don't push the blame on me. So what? You're claiming it's my fault because you're never the guilty one? It's always the bosses, the economy, the obligations you have, and now me? You're being silly. Quit with this martyr bullshit. Calm down or I have to... You're more of a shithead. You motherfucking... Calm down for God's sake. And so it goes. I yell out a lot of words I wanted to say for a long time, but held back. I fling a lot of insults I've been workshopping for years, hoping I'd never use them. I break a few things. At times, for, uh, for a split second, I see pity in somebody's eyes. It's gonna haunt me for a long time, but in the heat of the moment, I didn't care. These people, no, this company has nothing left to offer me, so at least let me take this catharsis. In the end, a security guard has to escort me out of the building, and that's the end of my journalistic career. I just felt like my world has crumbled into nothing. I mean, you have everything right, too. Like Jesus. If I were you, I would have already broken down into a sobbing mess. I'd love to, but I'm in on a subway, far too proud to cry in public, even now. And? And? It's stupid, but I feel like someone out there keeps destroying everything I hold dear just to see my reaction. Like it was a prank show and someone was waiting to, uh, to record me crying. So out of sheer spite, I'm going to do my best not to cry. Fuck you, whoever, wherever you are. That's the most Julia Sovinsky thing I've ever heard, spite as the greatest motivator. Uh. Not feeling particularly motivated to do anything right now. To be honest, I just want to stay in my bed until my shithead landlord calls the cops to forcefully evict me. Not surprised, shit. I know what, uh, uh, that whenever life decides to fuck you over, it's always one thing after another. But this is too much. How much is too much? Let's recap this last week of June 2019. I've been kicked out of my job. Well, not that I've ever been hired so let's just say my mentor broke every vague promise he ever made to me a big thing I've been working on for a year and a half went down the toilet it's all useless my body didn't protect my source properly and now they keep trying to, uh, now they keep trying to reach me through every possible channel to threaten me or just yell at me and they have every right to react like that all of my sidekicks are were shut down, nobody's replying to my emails, someone be dragging my name through the mud, behind the scenes, and it worked. I still have no idea who's sending these shitty message messages around, I've been asking, but... Listen, don't worry about it. I'm not going to stand idly by and watch you get cancelled by some mean spirit delusional. I said don't worry about it. I have three unread messages from my landlord. The messages previews were stressful enough. A call came from Chicago apparently. Dad had a bladder can uh, has bladder cancer. Mom is in hysterics. She'd gone crazy if you heard of my situation. So I have to pretend everything is okay whenever she calls. And she calls every day. And she just won't hang up before she offloads all her burdens on me. And I can't blame her, because we all had uh, to learn to cope with Dan's uh, psychopathic, uh, psychopathic tendencies somehow. I was robbed, all my documents and what little money I had, gone. I don't even know when or where it happened, and it's driving me crazy because I'm always extremely wary of pickpockets. The list goes on. 
I don't want to sound paranoid, but it really feels like a concerted attack. Paranoia is good. Anyway, I know you always ha hand away this topic away, but just remember that if anything happens, my place is, is your place. Don't have to get uh, through it alone. I do. I've been a trouble magnet. And as self-centered as I may be, I don't want it to affect you. I know. Listen, I have another call. Alright, just call me if anything happens, no matter how dumb it seems, okay? Just uh, and swing by whenever you can. I will, thank you. See ya. I put my phone away, exhale and blanket stare in front of me. Christ. I glance at my reflection in the window. Just look at this uh, idiot. Whenever the situation requires me to dress formally, I still feel a bit like a child cosplaying as an adult. Should I just fold the dress for the job you want, advice, and continue dressing up like a f trust fund kid who kept uh, parting on Brooklyn rooftop for years without a care in the word. Uh, world? It's only after a while that I realize the car is empty. And actually so, I start feeling uneasy, but someone's entered my peripheral, uh, peripheral vision. Who's that? Man, man. Some crazy eyes, shadows enveloping her. Oh, nice, nice. And that's the last uh, thing I consciously register. The world dissolves. When I come to, I'm out of the subway, standing in a back alley I don't recognize. It's pretty dark, my eyes start adjusting. I try to figure out what happened. There's a gun in my hand. A fate silhouette at my feet, it's not moving. Somebody stands in front of me, covered in shadows. I can't fully make out her face, but she's staring at me with invisible intent. She speaks, her voice is raspy and androgynous. Uh, her tone hateful and mocking. Sorry for that, uh, that was a hard uh, word to uh, pronounce. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Aren't you an Aster one? What is going on? Who are you? Don't play coy. My mind goes blank. I look at the ground. There's a body. Riddled bullet holes. And I recognize who it is. Was. The course belongs to Mike Antonoff. One of the double spirals whistleblowers. My source. He was just threatening me back, uh, to get back at me a few hours ago. Before I can feel even the tiniest bit of compassion, I feel a terrible realization. They will think I'm guilty. Oh my god, am I guilty? How is this real? It wasn't me, what happened to him, what have you done to me? Uh, does she have the sense of mind to understand this I actually think we will go with this one it's it sounds like the most interesting one actually yep okay you you have done something to me haven't you back in the subway that was you wasn't it a man is bleeding out at your feet and you're turning this around on me somehow I haven't done nothing to him again don't play coy you knew him. He was mad at you. You started telling him some stories about your situation. He wasn't even none of you. Uh, he wasn't having none of it. You got mad. Things escalated. He died. This isn't true. It's plausible, but what does, doesn't make it? It's true, or does it? This is just a nightmare. It doesn't even make sense. It must be a dream. And if it isn't, the person in front of me must be responsible. There's a faint voice in my head, screaming that it's her word, her world, that I'm just living in it. What the fuck have you done to me? Nothing yet, but I do what I can to get you locked up for life. This is murder in the first degree with special circumstances. Her detached voice and nonsensical tone only reassures me that this can't be real. 
I refuse to believe it in. I, I believe it is. Before I even manage to think this through, I point to gun at her. If I'd murder him, you wouldn't be acting like that. You wouldn't be standing in front of me. You'd be running away, calling the police, begging for help, yelling that I'm a psycho. Oh, you are a psycho, but not, I'm not a coward. I won't let you walk out of here alive. This doesn't make a single lick of sense. Tears wells up in my eyes. Why are you doing this? Because sometimes one has to confront what they're really made of. There's no two ways about it. She's got to be nuts. Slow but surely she starts walking towards me. Stop right there or I shoot! Go on, it's the only way you can get off the hook, isn't it? The only way you can survive. But you would definitely prove you're a monster I claim you are. What the fuck is this tone? So controlling, inauthentic, patronizing. I'm serious! For your own sake, you better be. She keeps getting closer. Maybe I did kill Antonov. Maybe I don't deserve to live. Maybe it's less tiring not to live. Maybe I should just let her take care of me. Maybe I just wake up. Or maybe this insane reality needs to be rejected as violently as possible. Maybe a world that wants to destroy me deserves to be destroyed. Or she's right in front of me. It's now or never. Uh, yeah, this is a scary situation. Uh, I actually think we're gonna shoot. You know, she's... She's uh, saying we're a murderer, she's, you know, psychopathic, uh, patronizing, grim, yeah, yeah, I think uh, a warning shot or, you know, a shot in fear <laughs> towards her will be the right way to go. I close my eyes and squeeze the trigger. A loud bang goes through the alley. I'm afraid to look at what I've done. I've been to a shooting range once and felt absolutely horrified by pistols. Such, such a small thing, but it can easily puncture a hole in the fabric reality is made of. Never knew I'd been able to use it again as another human being. The very thought makes me want to puke. You were a right, uh, you were a right choice after all. I'm so glad. I haven't allowed yourself to break. You haven't allowed yourself to break, but you're across the line I need you to cross. There's a silent flame in you that will become an inferno if left unchecked. I'm sure, hope it will. She's still alive. Her voice is coming from behind me. She puts her hand around my wrist and her cold mouth touches my neck. I can feel my shirt getting violently torn off. I don't understand, but I'm too dazed to protect, protest. That was your final test. Congratulations, you have proven yourself worthy. I can feel something sharp sliding into my neck. It's not painful, just startling. I think a doctor pushing a needle into your veins without a proper warning. Then it hits me. Pure bliss. What a wonderful scene. If you like vampires and world darkness, this is a really cool scene. The dopamine receptors are considered completely fried until now suddenly recovers and start bombarding me with pleasure I've never known before. I finally let the tears go. They come flooding. They've been waiting for years. It's such a relief. Is it raining? I feel like I'm in the middle of a deluge, at the least. Washing away all my fears, all of my sorrows, all my angers, all my pain, all of my ego. I've become one with the world and the woman behind me. She's holding me tight, making me feel like the only important thing in the world. Everything else blurs. I feel something intense towards her, something I've never felt before. Is this love? I hope it is. This is not you, this is a familiar cynical voice in the back of my head. 
But it's okay. I never felt particularly fond of me anyway. New York. You're perfect. Oh, please don't change a thing. He who laughs in the shadow always has the last laugh. Hallelujah. Praise be when everything is cliche and nothing is. Isn't that the uh, ever distant utopia I've been chasing all along? People on the other trains, I hope you're doing fine. God, shut up. Just enjoy it. You finally understand. She's making love to me. Give me birth to me. She's burying me. I'm pretty sure I've been dead for a while. I'm pretty sure I could stare at my own corpse in her hands from a distance for a moment. Somehow. And then I'm alive again. Her lift, uh, she lifts her mouth from my neck. No, wait. I taste my blood. Uh, I taste blood in my mouth. Was I drinking her blood too? I re realize uh, that whatever this was, it's over. And I have to bask in the afterglow while I still can. I also immediately understand that I'm going to chase this fleeting feeling for the rest of my existence. Finally, she lets out a whisper, which concludes the ceremony. No matter what happens next, don't forget, you're a monster. But you were lucky enough to be born in a world of monsters, and don't you ever mourn that fact. Embrace it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that scene was amazing stuff. Wow. Okay. Um, the beginning uh, is so much better uh, than Cutter is, so, sorry to say, but it, it is. This is fantastic. Once again, I find myself at Big Beat Burger. Familiar surrounding, faces I recognize mood as it all uh, as it ever was still i process it as an entirely different way it all frustrates me now or more precisely makes me frustrated with myself it's like i'm clinging there to the remnants of a cocoon i've outgrown Ugh. it's the same thing with these cigarettes i don't need them anymore so why do i keep holding on to them Fucking hell. It's like I refuse to accept that I have something better than I used to be. A vampire. Just two nights ago I met Karen. She embraced me. By which I mean she turned me into a kindred. She calls herself my sire and me her child. Just last night she taught me the basic of survival. Drinking blood, manipulating humans, bending steel, controlling shadows. Tonight I expect more lessons. Instead, she just told me to go out and enjoy myself. What's the catch? I asked. To which she responded, I might kill you if you prove to be a disappointment. <laughs> well, cool, cool sire. There are a few rules. I have to uphold the masquerade. I can't contact anyone I knew uh, as a human. I can't let anyone realize I'm not human anymore, I can't embrace anyone, and so on. Otherwise I'm free to do whatever I want, but for some reason the first thing I did was to come back here. Old habits dies hard. Karen is probably watching me from somewhere even now. The way I understand it, tomorrow night she is supposed to introduce me to the Camarilla, a local society of vampires. Turn out there are the ones who have been systematically ruined my life lately, all part of some secret evaluation that I barely pass in. Just imagine, imagining the reach they have makes me dizzy. After they destroyed all me that I barely care about, Kara rebuilt me anew. On, on one hand, she, her test left some scars that will take time to heal. On the other hand, maybe I should just be grateful. I'm snapped out of my thoughts by a sudden scream. Some douchebag yelling about his french fries not being salt enough. I think this is my cue to leave permanently. Goodbye BBB, hope I never see you again. I destined for great things you see. <laughs> yeah guys, okay. I think uh, 
that's the end of uh, tonight's episode thank you for uh, staying watching this story with me um, if you like the episode trigger like below and uh, follow me if you like uh, more uh, content like this and uh, have an awesome uh, evening